Whistler. I know many strange tales hidden in the hearts of men and women who have stepped into the shadows. Yes, I know the nameless terrors of which they dare not speak. And now the Whistler's strange story. Enough Rope. It came to Martin Forbes as a terrible shock. During the years since the death of his wife, Margaret, he had buried himself in his painting, managing somehow to drive the horror of it all out of his mind. But now it was back again, back in the person of a police lieutenant who had called without warning and quietly dropped his bombshell. And so, Mr. Forbes, we thought you'd want to know. The man who killed your wife was arrested late this afternoon. The man... Well, now, I, I can understand why it's such a shock to you, but you see, the investigation has never stopped. When a man has killed six people, the police department doesn't give up easily. The man... The man confessed? Well, no. The arresting officers had to use their guns. He's in the prison ward at the hospital. Naturally, we hope he'll come around long enough for questioning. But you're, you're certain he's... The Strangler? There's no doubt about it. Yes, it's my duty to inform the relatives of the victims. I'm only sorry it couldn't have been sooner, Mr. Well, Cooper. I'm sure you people have done everything possible. It must have been very difficult. Yes, it has been. Yeah, we really hope to have something in the case of, of your wife. It's being a little different from the rest. Different? The weapon, I mean. In all the other cases, it appeared the strangler used a silk scarf. But with your wife... Oh, yes, they told me... Uh... Length of rope, wasn't it? Mm hmm. Clothesline, judging from the marking. Too bad he didn't leave it around. Oh, uh, would it have made any difference? Oh, yes, yeah, sure. Even a scrap might have prevented his next murder. Our analyst could have traced it down. And with luck, we'd have had a description of the man who bought it. Well, the fact that you've captured him now. Yeah. Yeah, we'll find out the whole story now. Well, Mr. Forbes, I should be getting back. Uh -huh. I suppose if you learn anything further... Mm -hmm. We'll pass it along. Of course, there's a chance he may not pull through, but... Well, we want to be as thorough as he was, not leave any loose ends around. Any loose ends? Oh, yes, of course. Yes, sir. Well, I'll see you to the door. Later. Oh, no, 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 don't bother. Uh, good night, Mr. Forbes. We'll keep in touch. Good night, Lieutenant. Uh, good night. Loose ends. The rope... Even a scrap, he said. Can't leave a scrap. Yes, it came as a terrible shock, didn't it, Martin? But not for the reason the lieutenant suspected. No, it's something more impelling than grief that sends you upstairs to your attic studio. Just a scrap of rope. The lieutenant said just a tiny scrap would be enough to tie up the case to reveal that artist Martin Forbes had used a series of local stranglings to cover up the murder of his own wife. Naturally, the actual length of rope you used was destroyed immediately afterward, wasn't it, Martin? But the piece it came from, the odd length used to tie up an old trunk, to hang in your studio and on the attic wall, you know now that every piece must be found and burned at once. On the way out to the incinerator, you realize that the front doorbell is ringing. Hastily, you stuff the rope under a chair cushion and hurry to answer. Uh, yes? Well, you are home. Almost gave up. I've been standing here ringing Well, I was busy upstairs. I, uh... You are Mr. Forbes, uh, Martin Forbes? Uh, that's right. I'm Harvey Brandt, of Clara Brandt's husband. Clara Brandt. Well, I'm sorry, Mr. Brandt, but I can't ever recall meeting your wife. Oh, you never did. Clara was, uh, well, she was one of the strangest victims, too. Just like your wife, Mr. Forbes. 
Oh. Mind if I step in a minute? Uh, oh, no, 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 please do. Just wanted to talk to somebody, you know. I mean, after that detective fella came by with the news, he said he was coming here next. Oh, yes, yes, he left uh, just a short time ago. Awful shock having it all brought up again, isn't it? Uh, don't sit there. Huh? Uh, this other chair is more comfortable. Oh, don't worry about me. There's your phone, anyway. Oh, yes. Well, excuse me. Hello. Hello, darling. Adele. My boat docked a few hours ago. Oh, Martin, I've just seen the papers about your wife. I didn't uh, know. Yes, look, I am rather busy at the moment. We'll, we'll call you a little later, huh? What? Martin, uh, what? Fine, fine. I'll... Uh, Yes, well, uh, call me back later then. Uh, goodbye. You tremble as you hang up the phone, don't you, Mark? Because the sound of her voice brings it all back to you. And with a stranger sitting here in your living room, you can't even afford to think about it. You killed your wife, Margaret, because of Adele, didn't you? You wanted to be free to paint, and to be with her. It was the poetry of those two things that resulted in your murder plan. And Adele, away in Europe, had no idea what you meant. When you told her the night she sailed that things might be different after her two years' study in Europe. The sound of Harvey Brandt's voice cuts into your thoughts. Bad news, Mr. Fong? Oh, no, 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 it's nothing. Are you were saying, Mr. Brandt? Make it Harvey, eh? Yeah? You see, to get to the point, I thought it was time you and I ought to get together. We'll get together? Sure. Talk things over. Since Clara passed on... Well, how do you do it? Do what? Keep busy. Keep your mind occupied. Oh, well, I have my work, you see. I've done endless paintings Oh, since then. sure. Gives a man the time he wants. Eh? Oh, why... You're lucky having it work out that way. I just have the memories. Some of them not too good. The... Clara and I didn't get along very well. Oh. My fault, of course. I suppose you and your wife were very happy together. Very. Mm. I guess the ladies, any of them, would be attracted to you. Then I guess I was too demanding of Clara. You know, didn't give her enough rope. Yes, and never... uh, Could I get you a glass of wine or something, Mr. Brandt? <laughs> well, Harvey, I haven't been very hospitable. Oh, but... it's all right. You had your... Uh friend there to think about. Oh, that was nothing. I... Still, I might slip over to this other chair. I... Well, what's this? Under the cushion. Well, I'll take that. <laughs> Speaking of rope, Mr. Paul. <laughs> yes, but the housekeeper must have left it there. She's often very careless. <laughs> I I wonder if you'd mind. You caught me as a rather oh, busy sure, time. Oh, sure, sure, sure. You've got to get back to your painting, huh? Sorry, I didn't mean to stay anyhow. Would like to talk to you again sometime. Oh, any time, uh, uh, Mr. Brandt. <laughs> The, the rope. Oh, yes. I almost walked out with it in my hand. Here you are. <laughs> the old saying, huh? Give a man enough rope and... Uh, well, good night, Mr. Forbes. Martin. By the way, I've often thought it odd about your wife. The way she was killed. Well, what do you mean? Well, it was different. From the others, I mean. He, uh, used a rope. Yes. He did, didn't he? Well, uh, good night, Mr. Brandt. Good night, Martin. I look forward to seeing you again, sir. Huh? After a year without interruption or threats, a year to paint and to dream of a lovely dark-eyed girl who would someday come sailing back from Europe to find you a free man. It isn't that simple at the moment, is it? Not with the killer you blamed lying unconscious in the hospital, the police lieutenant who looked at you with quiet gray eyes, and Harvey Brandt, 
who somehow seemed to have more on his mind than grief. Harvey worries you, and so does the rope. The rope that can hang you if you don't watch out. After Harvey leaves, you waste no time in getting the rope outside to the incinerator. You watch the smoldering flame, and then with a line of poetry running through your mind, you start down the narrow path to the place where your wife's body was discovered more than a year ago. To reach the goal off afar, to pause and catch a falling star. Quite a jerk. <laughs> the man who wrote those lines. Free thinker, eh? Not restrained by laws. You're not either, are you, Mr. Ford? Well, I, I don't know what you mean, Lieutenant. I, uh, I noticed you were burning something in your incinerator. Oh, well, it's only... Bad. Very bad. You're only supposed to do that between 6 and 10 in the morning. Huh? <laughs> oh, 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 is that what brought you back here, Lieutenant? Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> I had a little trouble with my car back here in the street behind you, so I cut across the back lot. I uh, thought perhaps I could use your phone. Oh, huh? well, certainly. I'll show you where it is. All right, good. <laughs> uh, Mr. Brandt was here right up to a moment ago. Oh, I, I thought he was coming over. You know, we worry about him. Yeah, we're afraid he might do something foolish. Suicide? Mm, I don't know. But, uh, Mr. Forbes, if he ever does get acting peculiar, uh, would you tip us off? Might uh, save something from happening. Oh, I'll be glad to cooperate. You know, you'd be doing us a favor to sort of, uh, well, take him under your wing. You've managed to adjust yourself so much better. Yes, I've tried to busy myself in my work. Mm -hmm. uh, ah, the phone's in this way. Oh, yeah. Oh, having company? Uh, no, 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 I'm not expecting you. Oh, the phone's right on there, Lieutenant. Just help yourself. All right, thank you. Adele. Darling, you sounded so strange on the phone. Oh, no, 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 don't. Don't get out. But Martin, look, look, there's darling, a... darling, I can't see you now. It's just one of those things. It's nothing too important, really. Martin, but... I don't now, understand. Listen, there's but... a little cocktail bar down the street a few blocks. The blue lamp. I'll meet you there in, in an hour or so. How's that? Well, all right, darling. I'll be waiting. And that, Mr. Martin Forbes, is a brief account of my two years in Europe. I had an awfully hard time keeping my promise not to write while I was away, even though you didn't write to me. I missed you so much, darling. As much as I've missed you? Oh, much more. You probably forgot all about me the moment I stepped on the boat. Oh, no. I could never forget you, Adele. You were never out of my mind, not once. Well, I must say, your welcome home was rather strange, Martin. Goodness, the way you shooed me away from your house a little while ago. Oh, you probably had some gorgeous redhead modeling for you, and you didn't want me to see it. Oh, Adele. Yeah, I know. But just the same... After we're married, I'm going to insist you paint nothing but grapes, apples, elderly ladies, and landscapes. <laughs> Anything you say, Adele. Martin. Yes? It has upset you, hasn't it? What? I, I mean about the, the man the police caught. Oh, oh, that is. Oh, poor darling. Having to go through all this again. The papers are making a holiday of it. I know. I'm sorry you had to find out this way. I... I suppose I should have written to you about it, but I couldn't bring myself around. I understand. Naturally, mm -hmm. I intended to tell you when you came home. But... Well, it's all over now, Martin. The best thing to do is to forget it. Yeah. Completely. That's right. We'll just forget it. Another martini? Mm, I think not, darling. Oh, oh, what? Darling, you're so jumpy. It's only the pinball machine over there. The man must have hit the jackpot or something. You turn, glance toward the end of the bar. The man standing at the pinball machine is Harvey Brandt. He nods in your direction and a thin smile crosses his lips. As he turns to speak to the bartender, you slip off the bar stool, start for the door with Adele at your elbow. Before you're halfway across the room, Harvey calls to you. Martin! Partner! The what? Oh, Oh, hello. Well, well, how are you, my boy? I'm fine, Harvey, just fine. Leaving so soon, are you? I yes, thought... we were going out to dinner. I just stopped in for a drink. Oh, I was hoping I could buy you a drink, Martin, and uh, the young lady, of course. 
sort to of celebrate my good fortune. I just hit the jackpot. Oh, well, thank you very much, but do we... Surely are... you won't turn old Harvey down, miss. Woodling. Ah. Uh, Adele, uh, this is Harvey Brand. How do you do? Woodling. You're not from Maine, are you, by any chance? No, Texas. Texas? Well, mm. what do you know? Adele, I think we'd better go. Oh, now, Martin, my boy, you can't rush off like this. Drag this charming little lady away before we've had a chance to do some Texas talk? No. How about a drink, folks? Well, we should be getting along. Oh, really, I darling, that... I don't mind. It's still early. That's the ticket. Come along, folks. There's an empty table over here. Oh, waiter. trapped, aren't you, Martin? And you sit there for the next half hour, listening to Harvey Brandt passing himself off as a lifelong friend. Finally, you manage to fake an important phone call. When you return to the table, you use it as an excuse to break away. Then you take Adele to dinner, and you can see she's been impressed by the good-humored, friendly Mr. Brandt. After dinner, you drop Adele off at her hotel, then drive home. And as you start up the front steps, a familiar sound reaches you. The slow, rhythmical creaking of the porch swing. Hello, Martin. Huh? Oh, Harley. Your uh, little lady friend left a cigarette lighter in the lounge. Oh, oh well, thank you. I'll give it to you. Charming young woman. Very charming. Intelligent, too. Like intelligent women. You known her long, Martin? Uh, not very. Well, I was under the impression you'd met quite some time before your wife died. I met her only recently. She's interested in in art. Yes, yes. While you were making that phone call, she mentioned that she'd been studying in Europe for the past two years. Seems she also said something about knowing you before she went abroad, if I'm not mistaken. Well, it's all rather convenient the way things have turned out, isn't it? Siggy, Martin? Uh, no, thank you, no. Well, I think I'll turn in now, if you don't mind. I have a busy day tomorrow. That's the trouble with you, Martin. You work too hard. Don't relax enough. You ought to have a hobby. I have. In fact, I have several hobbies. Well, that's fine, Harvey. That's Tell me, Martin, uh, are you interested in guns? Guns? Yes, I have a wonderful collection. Just what you'd need to give you a nice start. Frankly, it takes up a little too much of my time, what with all the other hobbies I have. Been thinking of giving it up, the gun collection, I mean. Oh, I see. It's worth quite a bit of money. Well, naturally, I wouldn't expect you to pay it all off at one time. I could let you have a couple of pieces now and then, sort of buy it on the installment plan. But I don't know if I could afford it, Harvey. Oh, I'd make a fair price on the collection. I'm sure you wouldn't have any trouble at all meeting the payments. Well, well, I, I don't know, Harvey. Perhaps a... Hobby isn't what I need. I'm sure it is, Martin. Think it over anyway. There's no hurry. Oh, all right, I'll, I'll think it over. Good night. Lieutenant. Good morning, Mr. Forbes. I hope I didn't disturb oh, you. Oh, of course not. Won't you come in? Oh, no, no, no. No, thanks. I, I just happened to be passing by. I thought I'd see how you were getting along. Uh-huh. The, um, killer? Any new development? Oh, uh, still lingering. Oh, he hasn't regained consciousness? No, no, not exactly. He muttered something last night, something about not killing them all. Not killing them all? What do you suppose that means? Oh, we don't attach much importance to it. The man's in a coma. They often say odd things. Uh, but tell me, Mr. Forbes, uh, about Harvey Brandt. Is he feeling any better? Well, yes, yes, I think so. Hmm? Um, uh, there is one question I'd like to ask you, Lieutenant. Uh, what's that? Mr. Brandt, uh, is he well off? Income, I mean? Why do you ask that? Well, I was just curious. He doesn't seem to have a profession. <laughs> you know, I've, I've wondered about that myself. A man doesn't seem to have a dime. Sometimes I don't know how he gets along at all. Oh, I see. Oh, <laughs> that answer your question, Mr. Ford? Yes. Yes, that answers my question. That's right, Martin. 
The question is answered now, isn't it? It explains Harvey's suggestion that you buy his gun collection. Somehow he's learned the truth about your wife's death. Guess that the reason for it was Adele. And you're going to have to pay for his silence. Still, you're not quite certain that Harvey intends to blackmail you. That is, until that evening when you're out driving with Adele. Martin? Uh, I'm a visitor today. Friend of yours. A friend? Oh, well, that nice Mr. Brandt. Brandt, huh? Yes, he happened to be in the neighborhood. And... What do you want? Oh, he just dropped by to say hello and chat a little. What about? He's terribly interested in you, darling. As a matter of fact, he's quite interested in both of us. Oh? He wanted to know all about me, how we met and where. He was full of questions. My goodness, is he usually that inquisitive? No. No, not usually. He uh, also mentioned that you were thinking of buying his gun collection. Oh, oh yes. Uh-huh. I didn't know you were interested in guns, Martin. Well, well I wasn't really. It was a short time ago. Well, it's always nice to have a hobby. But... Isn't this one apt to be a bit expensive? Yes, I'm afraid so, Adele. Afraid it's going to be very expensive. I'll know how expensive tonight. I'm going to see Harley. Martin, come in, come in. Uh, sorry to make it so late, Harvey. Oh, it's quite all right, quite all right. Sit down, make yourself comfortable. Uh-huh. So you've decided to take that uh, gun collection off my hands, eh? <laughs> I knew you would. Didn't doubt it for a minute. The, uh, the price, Harvey, we haven't discussed that yet. Ten thousand dollars will take care of everything. Ten thousand? Cheap, Martin, considering everything I know <laughs> about guns. Here, I'll show you some of the pieces. Just finished cleaning them before you arrive. There's one, Martin. Finest old pistol I ever saw. Isn't it a beauty? Yes. Yes, that's a fine gun. Is it loaded? <laughs> sure is. Take it easy now. <laughs> Yes, sir, you're going to get a lot of pleasure out of this collection, my boy. Am I, Harvey? Mm-hmm. $10,000 for a collection of crummy guns? The whole lot's not worth more than $100. I don't understand what I'm you... not buying, Harvey. Now, just you a minute. You thought you could believe me for every cent I had, didn't you? You should have known, Harvey, if I murdered my wife, I wouldn't hesitate to murder again. Wait a minute, Martin. It's not too late to talk things It over. is too late, Harvey. It's too late for anything but this... <laughs> oh, I wasn't sure before now that you'd killed your wife, Martin, but now I know. Oh, you didn't think I'd be silly enough to have you a loaded gun, did you? And you didn't think I'd be silly enough to come here without a gun of my own, did you, Harvey? <laughs> It's almost over now, isn't it, Martin? The anxiety, the suspicion, the sheer terror of it all. The killer dying in the hospital will never talk again. You're sure of that. And Harvey Brandt, the only other person in the world who knows you murdered your wife, is gone now, dead at your feet. You wipe the fingerprints from the gun, press it into Harvey's hand, confident it will appeal as a simple case of suicide. And you're not worried the gun will be traced to you. No, you took care of that little matter over a year ago when you first planned to kill your wife. But the opportunity never presented itself. Then the strangler came along, and he provided you with a perfect plan. Less than 15 minutes later, you're slipping into your house quietly through the study door. And then suddenly you stop. There's someone in the next room. You can hear his voice. Slowly you open the door. Yeah? Yeah, that's right. No, no, he hasn't come in yet. All right. Yeah, I'll wait here. Oh, there you are. 
Hello, Mr. Forbes. Oh, oh, Lieutenant. Side door was open. I thought you'd be around. Yes, I was out for a breath of fresh air. Not so. You didn't go over to Brant's by any chance? Oh, no, no. Well, what makes you ask? I think you ought to know, Mr. Forbes. We've been watching Harvey Brant for a long time. Had his phone tapped for weeks. Checking everyone who went in and out of his house. We don't overlook any bets at all when we're watching a guy like Brandt. Nobody's been in and out of that house that we haven't seen. You mean that... Yes, I mean you were seen coming out of Brandt's place. The man you heard me talking to on the phone was the man watching Brandt's house. But then you... Yes. We know exactly what happened when you were there. You know, Mr. Forbes, we've been certain right from the start that Harvey Brandt killed his wife. But what I don't get is why you killed Harvey Brandt. The Whistler had...